Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie Streck, and I am a math teacher in the Nina Joint School District, and I'm here to talk to you about a game called Spiral Math. Um, I just took some cards and I laid them out in a spiral direction. If you go back to the directions page, you can see um, another example. I didn't put them in any specific order. I just shuffled the deck and laid out as many cards as I could fit. Uh, if I wasn't on Zoom, I would continue to go around the outside, uh, but this is as big of a screen as I can get. Uh, we need some game pieces. And so I found a snack size bag of Skittles and emptied that out. And we have enough for five players if we wanted to. Um, if there's how many people in your family that want to play, you'll all start right here on the start and then you will just need a dice if you don't have your own dice you can download a dice app on one of your devices and roll that um, and what you'll do is you will roll the dice and this tells me how many numbers I should move so if I'm red I will move four cards one two three four and now I will add the number on the dice to the number on the card so nine and a four if this is hard for your child to do they can count the spaces. Um, a tip that is often used is anchoring to five or 10. And so we know nine is really close to 10. So you might say to your child, well, if I take one here and give it to the nine, that makes 10. And then how many dots are left? And hopefully they'll see that there's three dots left. And they would say, oh yeah, 10 and three more is 13. If, thir if you get 13 correct, you leave your... Um, counter or your skittle on this spot and then it's the next person's turn so orange will go next orange got a five one two three four five orange will say i know this is five and two more is seven seven is correct so orange stays green gets one two three four if green was listening green would know that nine and four is 13 if not green may need to move these, count the images, the, the hearts on the nine, and then count up four more. Sometimes being able to represent amounts um, in these images can help a child to see that, oh yeah, 14 or 13 is nine hearts and four dots. Okay, we've got yellow to go. Yellow's going to go one, nine, and one more is 10. Yellow gets to stay. Purple, one, two, three, four, five, five and two more is seven. And the ga game continues until you get to the end. If a player, so red was first, um, they move three, one, two, three. If a player lands, let's say they landed on a two and they had rolled a two, if this is a double, they get to go again if they get the answer correct. So um, if your child or you were to roll a double, then you would take uh, an additional turn. If you notice that this feels too challenging for your child, only put in the cards uh, ace through five, and then they would be adding and staying anchored underneath 10. Um, if you notice that this feels too simple, you could add in some of the face value cards and make um, amounts for them, right? You could say, okay, the jack is going to be 11 and the queen is going to be 12. Um, those are options for you as well. So hopefully playing spiral math is something that your family enjoys. You could um, change things and tell them that they need to subtract um, whatever they roll on the dice from where they land. Uh, if they get a negative number, how would they pronounce that? What would it look like? Uh, if that feels difficult, but also um, like an appropriate kind of challenge, you could just write out a time, um, a number line that shows, you know, the numbers one through 10 and then at zero going back to negative 10 and letting your child jump along that number line to be able to figure out exactly how to solve these problems. But all of these things can be done with just a deck of cards and a few other household items. So hopefully your family will get a chance to play Spiral Math. If you do, please reach out and let me know how it went. Looking forward to hearing from you.